Hi, everyone. This is Catherine Adams. And Elizabeth Wallace. And you're listening to Binary System Podcast, Episode 10. And tonight, we are going to be talking about just various geeky stuff, because as of time of recording, it is still two days until we get a new episode of Welcome to Night Vale, and yep. it's not working out with our schedule very well. Nope, actually, because we're going to be busy because our parents are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, and Woo-hoo! we got stuff to do. Yeah, we got lots of stuff, including a secret preparation for something, which we're not going to talk about tonight, because I don't think mom listens to these episodes regularly, but you never know, she might, so we're not going to say anything. Because it's a surprise. Yeah, it is a surprise, but it is. So... Tonight we're talking about geeky things. There won't be an episode next week. The following week, we don't know, depending on what the drop schedule is with Welcome to Night Vale episodes, we may recap two episodes in one podcast. You never know. That we could just mix it up like that. And I'm actually looking forward to this next podcast because the conversations going around about the episode is that apparently they had originally planned this to be a live episode, but decided it was too weird. So they reworked it later for a regular episode. Oh, now I'm all curious. That's going to be too. awesome. Yes. Hope that's true. Yes. But you know me and Catherine, we never lack for geeky stuff to talk about. So what have you been up to lately? I finally watched the first episode of Sense8, which you had been telling me about and which I have heard yes. very good things about. And everybody around me has either watched it and loved it or they haven't, but they've been hearing great things about it. So I finally yeah. gave in, watched it last night. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. It's That's the thing. So many people complained about it being slow, and in places it is, I admit. But man, it is such a visual show. It really is just beautiful. Things that pop out, like, okay, I'm lazy when it comes to names. And since I've only watched one episode, I don't know anybody's names yet on the show. So I'll be just talking about this one person, that one person. Uh, The two chicks who are dating, who obviously are very much in love. And they're sitting in this looks like a Roman amphitheater place in San Francisco, which I don't know. I guess that's maybe a, a place. I think it's a landmark or something. It's, it's weird. It looks a little bit like the Oregon Pavilion in San Diego, so I had to check that out. But it's not. It's definitely San Francisco. I just They're sitting there, and they're having a conversation, having a wonderful time. And there's these two guys that are dressed up in fairy costumes dancing around. I just thought, <laughs> it's just quirky and beautiful. Yes, it is. And how interesting is it that that's Martha Jones from Doctor Who? Yes! I, just, I, I watched that for a second I'm like wait a minute (laughs) (laughs) is she gay in real life I don't know if she is or not I don't know actually that's a very good question actually so I I keep finding these things out about certain actors and going wow new information yes and there's there's just going to be some moments during the show like some great moments and some cool exciting moments and then some moments where you're like wow that is really pretty what they just did there that was really really pretty and just for things that I can't even explain why like the whole scene with the police officer and the DJ meeting each other astrally obviously in a burnt out cathedral in Chicago and when she just appears Appears and she's standing there and it's just looking at that going this is stunningly nice to look at oh this yeah it's scene. great it's great and the whole there's definitely weird things and i'm still not entirely sure about the ending which is not bad but i was just like i may, may need to watch that one again um but it's I've, it's a very satisfying show from beginning to end i really liked it good you don't and have I, to get past the slow bits you definitely do that's fine and i was also a little surprised to see that uh daryl hannah was in it <laughs> yeah, yeah i didn't expect yeah. that no no i think patty said the same thing she's like oh daryl hannah was in that i'm like she's not in there too too much but that's not the last you're going to see of her but yes well i um, was actually watching that with nathan last night and he we watched the full episode and he said so daryl hannah's going to be the obi-wan kenobi of this show I'm like looks like yeah I don't know that that's necessarily the case, but you're going to find out some stuff. So okay, right. okay, yes, cool. Yes. And then you also finished up watching a season of something else? Uh, season three of Walking Dead. What was the haiku that you sent me the other day? Okay, let's see what it was. Uh, Walking Dead season, the usual body count, pity for a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the same thing as it was in season two. You have somebody who has been an absolute ass for just about every scene that you see them in. In season two, it was Shane. And in season three, it was Merle. And by the time it ends, you have sympathy for them. You may not yeah. like them very much. You may think that they really brought a lot of what happened to them on themselves. And you still feel sorry for them. Right, right. Yeah, so I, mean, I don't that- want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. But yeah, there's... There's a lot of that that happens. Wow. But yeah, but other than that, I mean, 
the governor, he's a horrifying character. Although I'm wondering if in season four, and obviously you already know, uh, if he's going to be a more or less of a nuanced character now, now that a lot more people know that he's evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish I could tell you. I really wish I could. There's, yeah, there's so, yeah. Anyway, but, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> as for, I mean amazing imagery. I mean, that scene in season three of Michonne standing at the gate covered in zombie guts, holding a basket containing baby formula. That just, I liked that image. And I like Michonne. She is now my favorite character. Oh, really? Because even through all that, I'm still like, still Daryl, you know, if Daryl dies, we riot because he's just, you know, that's that dude. He was like an underwear model for a while, I suppose. Was and he? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Is and that's of course, really surprised when you think about it. Does that really surprise you? No, I mean, look it, at him. I mean, he was also um, Boondock Saints, right? Wasn't that yes, what you were talking about? Yes, that was him. Yes, that was him. that's very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, he's awfully appealing to him. I mean, there was one episode where he got two moments of, yay, it's Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> he gets so many. And it's really weird because he, you know, here he is playing a redneck, but he's like almost like a. A wilderness mystic. He really is, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. and that's there's a big difference between him and Merle is that I don't know, when Daryl sees someone that's weaker than him, his yeah. first reaction is compassion, ob- oddly yeah. enough. I mean, for the yeah. fact that he's treated this redneck hick, he really I mean, he sees someone that needs help and it's his first instinct to try to help them. And Merle, when he sees weakness, his first instinct is to despise them. I mean he uh, can't and despise them and also how to take advantage of it. Right. You know, very right. opportunistic. I mean, yeah. No, yeah. But then of course yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> at some point, we're just, once you and I are both caught up at the same time, we're just going to have a big spoilerific episode. We're going to be like, all right, guys, if you don't want to hear spoilers for Walking Dead, stop listening now. But that's, this, that is not today. Not today. <laughs> Someday no. we will do that, but not today. No, I what? still, I figure I still have 32 more episodes to catch up with, and then we'll have the beginning of season six. So, yes, yes. Yeah, I got, I got some time. And I also just started watching Fear the Walking Dead, which had its first episode. As of recording, that was last week. Second episode is tonight. Uh, If I get home in time to watch it live instead of DVRing DVRing it, um, I'm going to try and do a live tweet on the Comic Issues Pod Twitter handle. So we'll see how that goes. Very interesting, but it is a deliberately slow start because you are seeing how this infection hit LA for the very first time in in sort of hit the public consciousness for the first time you know but it's it's very 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 chilling because you keep seeing things going on and then you see like helicopters flying over one place and hear sirens in the other and you kind of know that they're handling things that are going on that the main characters aren't aware of yet so very see now when i first heard that they were going to be having this spinoff and i think it was you and anthony from the comic issues podcast were talking about the fact that this is going to go into the history of how the whole epidemic started and my first reaction was not oh wow i want to hear about that it was you mean they don't talk about that in the regular season? That surprised me because I'd only seen a few episodes of the first season when I heard that. So I was a little shocked to find out that five seasons later and The Walking Dead did not go into detail about that other than that one glimpse of uh, the CDC, I think, before it explodes, basically. And even then, I don't know how much of the cause we're going to find out because I think we're just seeing like what it would look like to us. You know, you're doing your normal day to day stuff and things progressively get worse and worse, but I still don't know if we're going to know why it got started. I don't, I don't know. And that's, that kind of matches up with a lot of zombie stories. I mean, you haven't, you haven't read World War Z yet, have you? No, I have not. No, no. Or seen the movie, which I hear, I hear if you can let go of the fact that the movie is nothing like the book. I hear the movie is actually pretty fun. Well, and the book, I just, that's one thing that appeals to me so much in anything that I read is when someone goes into the history of something like, well, let me tell you how this started. And that's pretty much all World War Z is. It's everybody telling the story of what happened to them during the great zombie epidemic. And you don't find out exactly how all of it started. There's a patient zero, you've got no idea where the original infection came from. So I think people had theories. 
no real solutions because obviously in a worldwide epidemic like that, the records are probably one of the first things that get destroyed when yeah. things catch on fire. Yeah, yeah, I would not be surprised. But um, yeah, so so far liking it. Um, definitely, if you go and watch Fear of the Walking Dead, just be prepared for there's a lot of backstory going on about the characters themselves. We are meeting the main characters and really getting to know them before the shit hits the fan. So that's so wait a minute. So this is all the same? Oh, wait a minute. The main characters of the show. Of this show, yes. Of this yes, show. Completely oh, different, okay. completely different characters from the regular Walking Dead. This is taking place in LA, which I'd love to hear from any LA people how it felt to see all these landmarks. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah, that looks like Southern California, you know, and it looks kind of smoggy, which I guess, you know, but I'm in San Diego, so I don't see LA that often. I actually kind of hope that they're somehow going to make it into San Diego so I can see some of our landmarks. That'd be cool. They, they got to have some zombie horde uh, attacking the convention center just because. (laughs) Yes. But to sort of jump to the side real fast, uh, I wanted to ask you about something. I got to read a preview copy of this week's More Than Meets the Eye, Transformers More Than Meets the Eye, issue 44, I believe. And they made a comment about something at one point, and you have read more of the back issues than I have on this one. So what I want to know is, are there any current hot spots like places where sparks are being created that haven't been made into transformers yet i don't think so anymore i think when they had they had a hot spot that got activated when they discovered one of cybertron's moons right and it activated when hot rod stepped foot onto the surface of the moon. So of course he still thinks he's the chosen one because of that. I know. Yes. Oh, it's still just, Oh my God, fed to his ego. Uh, But then it stopped. And I think the only one that came out of that was the one that uh, brainstorm harvested and kept inside his uh, briefcase or no, kept it inside his uh, chest plate, I think. Oh, that's right. So they made a comment at one point about the transformers race being finite that this is it. Is that the case? I had never, is that something that they had ever spelled out? Oh. It was just, it was mentioned in terms of like, oh yeah, you know, of course the Transformers race is finite. And I'm like, are they? Are they really? There aren't any more being created? I mean, because constructed cold will take a, can take a spark from an existing spark, Ah, right? that was, nah, that was actually the propaganda that was spread about that. They, t- they called it spark splicing, Uh, But that was cover, because what it was, was they were harvesting sparks from the Matrix. And that was, that led to a whole ideology of the idea, I, you know, you haven't even read the whole thing about the Judge character showing up and deciding that all the constructed cold characters uh, were part of the Transformers' original sin and needed to be eliminated. No, but I I know that that was a thing. I know that the constructed cold uh, guys had it real rough for a while. There, was just you called it apartheid of the uh, uh, the, of the, the trans. Yeah, it was the it, well. I mean, that was something that had been for ages. I mean, not only uh, segregating Transformers based on whether or not you know they had. It was their real alt modes. quote unquote sparks, you know. Oh, yeah, real sparks or you know really good uh, alt modes. Yeah, but uh, that character decided that it was a sacrilege what they had done to harvest it from the Matrix. Wow. Now the Matrix is no more. You remember right, that exactly. the Matrix got wiped out and turned into a star map, so you can't get any more sparks from there. And if they don't have any more. <sighs> If all the hot, because the colonies I understood took hot spots with them. That's why the Camions have right. female body types because they were from sparks that were harvested from a completely different hot spot on a completely different, you know, moon colony. What you call it? So I wondered if some of their alt modes also had to do with the fact that I know that metal is extremely limited on that planet. It's why they don't use projectile weapons because if you have a weapon that fires something, once it's gone, it's gone forever and they didn't have enough metal to lose it. That's why they tend to fight with swords so often because you want a weapon that you can hold on to. So I wondered if, I wondered if their alt modes, smaller, slimmer alt modes had to do with the lack of metal that was available to this, them for building bodies. This know? is totally new information for me. I, I think that's rather cool. Oh, oh really? That was, I think uh, one of the Windblade comics, I think, mentioned something about that, about fighting with swords and the reason why you don't use projectile weapons on a planet that has very little metal, you know? and Very uh, little metal and very little atmosphere, I would imagine. So Exactly. And, and, also, you- and so 
the Velocitrons, I mean, in one of the recent uh, Windblight issues, they were calling Blur fatty because he's, you know, much bigger than they are, but they are much smaller in turn because their whole world is based on speed. So, you know, I wondered if form follows function and vice versa, I suppose. So I didn't That know could be that. it. But if none of their hotspots are working anymore, then yeah, there's not going to be any more place to get it unless they actually come up with spark splicing. So yeah, it could be finite. That makes mm. a lot of sense. I don't think mm. anyone's ever addressed that because Transformers live for millions of years. And that's something that I wanted to go on. Does it seem to you like they don't ever actually address the fact that Transformers are millions of years old and they have that much memory and the fact that wouldn't all this stuff that had been taking place on Earth feel like the blink of an eye to them? Probably. I don't know. You know, they just always like when they talk to somebody who's old, I, I think they're just their perception and their scale of time is different. You know, to them, somebody who's lived millions upon millions of years is definitely old, but old the way we see somebody who's 80, you know, not just like stupidly, ridiculously ancient. So I don't know. Yeah. Know? And it's just I mean, that's something that occurred. I actually thought it would have been fun to have. I mean, it's only because I don't like the human characters and I kind of wish they'd go away, but just yes. to have a couple of storylines and then have somebody talk about, say, maybe we should ask such and so-and-so, them, oh, they died. When? A couple of years ago. We were just talking to them. So just something yeah. to show that, wow, a lot of time has actually passed, but they don't realize it because they're millions of years old. It's not going to feel like that much time. No, I'd like to see that too. I really would. I mean, their reactions with humans, since I don't tend to read the regular Transformers title, I'm sort of, I don't know, it's its always interesting to see how they think about humans. I mean, like, Swerve loves human sitcoms. I think that's just kind of neat. And there's enough little references peppered in here and there. When they talked about, what was it? They talked in one of the issues about how one of the Transformers, I think it's Blue Streak, really likes graphic novels. He thinks they're awesome. But he's the ones that humans have created. So I just... I, they, I don't know, they, they've got to have some kind of perception of organics, but I don't know, I'd like to hear more about that. Yes, well, without too many humans actually getting into the mix. Right, yes, I like the way Swerve does it. And that also does kind of seem to show a little bit about their perception of time and memory and everything that Swerve was able to download the entirety of human knowledge or human civilization or something. And I'm wondering, did he really, I mean, did he do that? And because he's a transformer and his memories have to really go on for that long, he could hold that much? Or did he just focus on TV? Yeah, and it really could be a little of column A, column B, or he could have done neither of those things and he was just lying to make himself look better. Well, that's true. But that's really all we're going to talk about this week because we're going to go finish getting prepared for the anniversary. Woohoo. So that'll be fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about that when we get back. So if you need something to tide you over, you can always go over and watch the or listen to the Comic Issues podcast. Got the address for that yes. one? Yes, that is at comic-issues.com. You can come listen to me and Anthony talk about comic books. We just had a NerdCon live recording, and that was where we talked about and had members from Comic Issues Podcast, Movie Issues Podcast, Two Geeks and a Podcast, Binary System Podcast, and Pixel Clicks Podcast. So that covers comic books, general geekiness, tabletop, gaming, movies. Pretty much if you're into something, we have a podcast that's talking about it. All of that is on pixelatedgeek.com. But other than that, we will talk to you guys in two weeks. Talk to y'all later. 